£10 and a reference will buy you shooting over more than 10 miles of coastline. Shooting here splits into two halves. There's salt marsh, like this, and there's sand. Morecambe Bay, mile upon mile of sliding, slipping quick sands where the tide can run in faster than a horse can gallop. It was death to those poor Chinese cocklers. But it's a fantastic place for wildfowling and we're here with Grange Wildfowlers. There are more water hazards here than the badminton cross-country course. At one time it was walled off from the sea and uh, was a very, very productive piece of arable land until unfortunately the sea wall collapsed into the river that ran alongside it and it's never been uh, decided uh, to re-protect it. So now you just get a little bit of rough grazing and that's all that comes from it. The sand moves quite a lot, doesn't it? Uh, oh, well, the fishermen use the little road just alongside where we are to get out to go and, and shrimp and to go for their cockles. And they couldn't use that for quite a few months because instead of it just being a, a very, very gradual slope down from the marsh to the sea, it was a drop off of about 15 or 20 feet into a great big hole. And so there was no access at all for them. And that uh, caused quite a kerfuffle. Well, it must have some effect on the wildfowling and the birds, doesn't it? The river's constantly moving like that and changing. Well, it, it, it does. It means that uh, at times there are places where they have had found shelter which suddenly become exposed. Or at one time we used to get a great many widgeon and uh, pintail duck and they used to be eating off the samphire and those beds just washed away in, in a matter of a few weeks. And it, it's hard for anyone who hasn't seen it to just imagine how many tonnes of sand. You could be talking of 10,000 tonnes just in an hour disappear. And it, it, it alters the whole setup and the, the suitability of it as a habitat for the wildfowl. But just at present, we're on a, a bit of a roll and the fowl are following the marsh again, yeah. and uh, I should say the whole estuary again. Because mm, I used to come and collect the samphire, it's delicious, but it's, when I used to shoot up here there were very few geese, I think we had a few greys over on the Olverston side, but we never saw much. That's changed, hasn't it? It's been a remarkable improvement, uh, but uh, as you'll know that the population of geese, the grey geese, especially the pink feet, has gone up uh, many fold in the last 50 years. Uh, and now we have huge concentrations south of this uh, estuary on uh, Cochran Marsh and down to Southport and we get trading backwards and forwards between there and, and on the Solway marshes and it's only probably an hour's flight for a, a goose to go there but we get some overspill here and we, we get a bit of a mixture there are early season there are the feral grey lags which were introduced or reintroduced here 50 years ago, and then we get uh, starting mid September, maybe late September, we get the uh, migratory pink feet and some more grey lags. But uh, we, we've had a few this year which, for many years, there were no geese at all shot on this marsh. Position of the sea channels, the river channels, that when the tide is out, all these have a major, major effect, and at present we they're having a beneficial effect to, for us. So it's just really, shooting is perfectly sustainable here. It's just taking off that sustainable surplus, if that even. Well, I, I, I don't think we do rem remove that surplus. I, I think we're just chipping away at the edge, but we are perfectly happy with that. As you know, we, we do have uh, conservation areas here, sanctuaries, uh, and quite frankly we don't find many more fowl in those sanctuary areas than we do on the open marsh. It isn't as if that is their only piece of uh, peace and quiet. They are happy with the situation as it is and so uh, long may it continue. It's good to talk about conserving fowl. What about conserving people? I mean I've heard it can be pretty dangerous out here on the sands can't it? Well uh, we uh, old dinosaurs and the older hands in the, the club when we have our meetings we we interview people at a great length who come to apply for membership and I think we enjoy frightening one another as much as anything, telling the tales of... Every one of us has had a, 
a frightening incident where the tide has come in maybe half an hour earlier than we expected or we've got to a ditch which we uh, a gutter which we pa passed over quite happily going out onto the sands when we came back it was all uh, really sticky and sinky and it, well it exercises the mind quite considerably if you get stuck in one of those with a big tide rushing towards you but have we ever lost any wildfowlers out there not permanently. <laughs> they've been they've been missing for a few hours, but uh, they've always yeah. turned up all right. But uh, one can't be too careful, and we really do insist that with people who are joining the club that they go accompanied for quite some while, and and they do the homework to make sure because it, it isn't something to be played around with. We we are having a laugh now about it, but. Uh, it's a real, real danger, and they've got to be aware of that the whole time. It's a sort of an eerie place at night as well out there. I mean, it's, it's, I've heard of dobbies and things like this, and, you know, will-o'-the-wisps appearing on the marsh. It's a spooky sort of place at night. It, it, it can be, and it's especially if suddenly there's one of these birds call when, when you're not expecting anything, you haven't spoken to anyone for several hours, and suddenly... There's a, a high-pitched squealing sort of a sound from one of the uh, waders, or uh, maybe maybe a goose calling. It, it can it can be a bit spooky, but uh, one gets used to it. No one's had any bad experiences out there. <laughs> well, I don't think they want to admit that they were frightened and they thought they'd seen a ghost. So whether they did or they didn't, I don't know, Jeff. <laughs> a field reveals why this has become such a fabulous wildfowling destination. There are more than a thousand geese here, according to the gamekeeper, and in half an hour's time, they're going to fly over the Leven Estuary, the river that flows out of Windermere. We move on to those dangerous sands to put out guns. This was the main route south from the Lake District to Lancaster and whole coaches were lost in the rising tide. Cartmill Priory overlooks that treacherous route and many people who died there are buried here. As light fades and the last glimmer of sun melts behind the Sir John Barrow monument, the lights of the Glaxo factory provide the glow that light our path. <laughs> 